Hi guys, from this month's PPC Good Food magazine, I made this incredible next level beef bourguignon and it really was just epic. Perfect low and slow cooked beef that is so incredibly tender with loads of burgundy flavors. This is a bit of an undertaking though, not a dish to attempt when you're in a rush to get something on the table, but one to do when you're free to enjoy the process of cooking or one to make a day before you plan on serving to a crowd. Start off a day or two ahead with a large bowl and go ahead and add your beef. I'm using 1.2 kilograms of stewing beef here, cut quite big into five centimeter chunks. I think my butcher actually cuts them a bit bigger, but it doesn't matter because it's all going to be so tender in the end anyway. Then I added a sprig of fresh bay leaves, at least three. One star anise. This kind of tastes like licorice, which I don't like, but it gives a lovely flavor to meat dishes. Add a generous bunch of fresh thyme leaves. Now the recipe calls for one head of garlic halved, but because mine are kind of wimpy looking, I'm going to use two, so just halve them along their equator and add them to the bowl as well. Then season generously here with sea salt flakes and a really good grinding of freshly ground black pepper. Then just give everything a really good mix with a wooden spoon. Then just set it aside while you heat up your wine. You're going to need about a litre of a full-bodied red wine, preferably a French and made from Pinot Noir. Annoyingly, you'll have to go to a second bottle for that, but don't worry, you can just save the rest of that bottle to drink with the dish. Then place the wine over a high heat and bring to the boil. Once boiling, allow it to boil for another five minutes. Or if you like, you can flame it by taking an ignited match and just lighting it at arm's length. I didn't bother though, and mine turned out beautiful. So then take the wine off the heat and pour it over your beef. Mix it up really, really well and then cover the bowl with cling film and allow it to cool completely before you transfer to the fridge to let it sit for at least overnight or up to 36 hours. I was actually in no rush at all, so I went ahead and left it in there for the full 36 hours. 36 hours later, I took it out of the fridge, removed the cling film and then took out each piece of beef and dried it really well on some kitchen paper. This is to ensure that it'll brown up really, really nicely. Now, in a large, heavy casserole, heat up about two and a half tablespoons of sunflower oil. And once it's really nice and hot, go ahead and brown the meat in batches. Brown them on all sides, taking about 10 minutes in total. And make sure you get some nice caramelized color on there. Once the beef is nice and brown all over, go ahead and take them all out and let them rest on a plate to the side. Now turn the heat down to medium and go ahead and add another little drop of oil if you think you need it. Preheat the oven to 150 degrees Celsius before you add one roughly chopped onion and three sticks of roughly chopped celery and six carrots peeled and chopped into large chunks. Then stir fry the veg for about 10 minutes in all those beefy juices with a wooden spoon, trying to scrape up any kind of gnarly bits at the bottom of the pan. Those are pure flavour and if you can get them off, they'll dissolve in the sauce and really, really rich in it. 10 minutes later, go in with a really generous tablespoon of plain flour, sprinkle it over and mix it in really well. Add just about a teaspoon of tomato puree and mix that in as well. Then return the beef pieces to the pot and pour in any resting juices. Then pour in the big bowl of marinade, so all that red wine and all the aromatics. Then allow everything to come to a nice simmer before you give everything a really good stir and then clamp the lid on and transfer it to the oven and leave it there for three and a half to four hours. And just give it a good stir maybe every hour or so. In the meantime, take a large frying pan and add another two and a half tablespoons of sunflower oil to it. Once the oil is nice and hot, go ahead and add 150 grams of peeled shallots or pearl onions to it and 150 grams of unsmoked bacon lardons. Now stir fry over a medium heat until the onions become soft and the little bacon becomes nice and crispy and golden. The recipe says that this should take about 15 minutes but actually took me a little bit longer, probably closer to 20. Then pile in 150 grams of button mushrooms, turn the heat up to high and stir fry it until the mushrooms are just cooked. That should probably only take four or five minutes and when they are cooked, just take the pan off the heat and set it aside until later. Then just before the stew comes out of the oven, take a large saucepan and line it with a sieve. Then take out the stew. This would be really nice now if you just added in the onions, bacon and mushrooms and mix them in, but instead we're going to take it to the next level. So to do this, we're going to pass all of this stew through the sieve. 
you can see how tender and fall apart that beef is right now. Make sure to ladle all of the sauce into the sieve, which will catch all the little bits of beef, carrot, celery, thyme, everything, and just leave a really, really delicious, smooth sauce in the saucepan below. Next, return the carrots and the beef to the casserole, discarding any bit of celery or thyme branches or anything else from the sieve. Before discarding anything though, I would give it one last squeeze through the sieve to make sure you get all of that really beautiful rich sauce. Now to take this stew to the absolute next level, I'm going to return this sauce to the heat to let it reduce down and thicken up and really intensify in flavour. So just turn the heat onto high to let it come to the boil and make sure to stir it occasionally. Once it's boiled for 5 or 10 minutes and reduced by at least half, take it off the heat Bring back the casserole of beef and carrots and pour the thickened sauce over it. The casserole is now over a low heat and make sure you scrape down every last drop of that intense sauce. A rubber spatula is really good for this if you have one. Now pile in the onions, lardons and mushrooms and stir everything together really, really gently. If you stir it too hard, the beef is just gonna fall apart. But just try to make sure that everything is nicely coated in that really, really thick, rich sauce. Once everything is nice and coated, I would serve it at the table family style, rather than dishing it out into individual portions. Just give it a good, generous scattering of some freshly chopped parsley and serve it alongside some mashed potatoes I think are best. This beef really was just insanely flavoursome and tender. You could literally eat it with a spoon. It was just so good. I can't deny that it is a lot of work, but it's all totally worth it. I will definitely be making this more often, especially during the cold winter months. Beautiful. Thanks a million for watching, guys. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. You can check me out on social media if you like. You'll find all the links to my accounts in the description, as well as the link to my blog where you'll find this full recipe at www.rookiecook.org.